The following is a Goulash Media production. Goulashmedia.net. Welcome to the system is down. Yes, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're going to talk about Flat Earth again, because I know you guys just love it so much deep down, even though you, on the outside, you you pretend like it makes you insane with anger. I'm insane with anger! (laughs) What's up, downers? Welcome back to another great episode of the least comfortable show on the web. The system is down, and thank you so much for faithfully tuning in every Monday morning for your weekly dose of discomfort. And if you're new here and you like to get weird, then you're in the right place. So go ahead and give a big thank you to whoever told you about the show and invited you to listen, because it's going to be a fun one. Uh, now, a lot of you already know that I I personally love this topic. I love this theory, and not just because it rustles everyone's jimmies, but whether I fully believe it or not, I, I just find... It is at the very least a fascinating and exciting thought experiment. And really, I mean, if you look into it, if you set your angry knee-jerk reactions aside and just dig into it a little bit, you're going to see that there's at least some weird stuff here that's not quite adding up. Like, these people aren't just believing this crazy idea for no reason. There's, There's some cool stuff to it. And it's a fun theory. Calm down. It's a fun theory. It is. But people just get... So mad at the idea that someone else thinks that the earth is a different shape. I mean, you you can say things like 9-11 was an inside job. The government killed Kennedy. uh, The moon landing was faked. um, Illuminati, chemtrails, fluoride, vaccines, aliens, Freemasons, all that stuff. You can even say our entire reality is a simulation. Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse Tyson have both said that they think there's a really good chance that we're in a simulation and none of this is real. If you bring up any of these topics, people generally, I mean, they might think you're a little little crazy, but they don't get upset about them. They don't get physically angry. Uh, They'll at least hear you out. Uh, If you say the two words, flat earth, people lose their freaking minds. Their faces melt off like in Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> I, I mean, try it. Try it sometime. I'm not exaggerating. So so to recap, you can say uh, reality is a simulation. You don't exist. I don't exist. The Earth doesn't exist. None of this is real. And you can still be called a world-renowned scientist, right? Yeah. Now, you say the Earth exists, but... I think I think it's a different shape. Then you're an idiot and a danger to society. In a free society, you can and should think whatever you want. And if you want to think the world is flat, go right ahead. But if you think the world is flat and you have influence over others, then being wrong becomes being harmful to the health, the wealth, and the security of our citizenry. <sighs> I love it. <laughs> you love it. Be honest. You love it. So settle down. It, it's not going to hurt you. We're going to do it. We're going to talk about it again. You're going to listen. Here's my conversation with Robbie Davidson. You guys, let's get weird. My guest today is documentarian, public speaker, organizer of the National Flat Earth Con- Conference, and just all around fascinating individual. Uh, celebrate truths, Robbie Davidson. Robbie, how are you doing, man? Very good. Thanks for having me on. It's a real pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, as as my listeners know, uh, I am at the very least a big enthusiast of a lot of the theories that we're going to be going over tonight, and uh, the flat Earth theories, uh, scientism, spiritual deception, and what have you. Um, I, I can't say I personally am 100% sold on the ideas, but I absolutely love digging into them and talking about all of it, uh, even though you know people seem to get pretty triggered whenever I do. But Robbie, I, I heard your story in particular on another podcast. Um, I thought your method of presenting the ideas and making everything really, uh, presenting it in a really clear, concise manner and connecting everything together was just fantastic. I really wanted to bring you on and uh, you were gracious enough to agree to. So 
I, I guess just start from the top. Give me your background and tell me everything. <laughs> Well, like I said, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, we're at 2018 and this is probably uh, the last topic I ever thought I'd be speaking on. Um, like many, when you first hear the this topic, you laugh and you ridicule, and I did. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever heard of. Right. But once I started actually looking into it, you know, there was a lot of uh, credibility as far as the, the research I did. Now, I was always kind of known as kind of a conspiracy theorist. I'd always look into things. I'd be skeptical on things. But, of course, you're never skeptical about uh, the Earth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once I took the uh, the time to actually start exploring it, for me, one of the biggest conspiracies that I kind of held on to was that they didn't land on the moon. Mm -hmm. So what I what I say to a lot of people is if you're holding on to the fact that they lo they went to the moon, no problem in the 1960s and 70s, then they, they, this topic's going to be hard for you to digest. But for me, I already believed that they didn't land on the moon. So I was open to saying, well, wait a minute. If they didn't go to the moon, well, how far can they go? And it's like, well, why would they lie? And all these questions that a lot of people bring up in this topic. So for me, you know, my upbringing was believing a lot of, you know, what scientism had taught me, you know, whether it was, you know, showing me, you know, the proof, the reality of our world. And what I was startled to find out was that most of, you know, what I was holding on to was indeed scientism and it wasn't science. Um, I'll go on the record and say that uh, I'm a big believer. I love true science. What uh, I'm against is scientism. And that's why I came out with my last two documentary films, Scientism Exposed and Scientism Exposed 2, because I think a lot of people, you know, aren't familiar with those terms. And well, what's the difference between science and scientism? So I opened the documentary, Scientism Exposed, showing the dichotomy between the two. And it's important to structure that because, again, a lot of our origins, a lot of what we believe and hold on to uh, and we believe is science, a lot of it's scientism. It's true. It's not true science. It's not under the empirical method. True science you know, an experimentation was something that you could test, you could observe, you could repeat. A lot of what we're seeing is theoretical. A lot of it's an agenda. A lot of it's spirituality. And we'll get into that further in this broadcast. But for me, you know, coming to this topic was really, it blew my mind because I never thought that something could, you know, wage an assault on mankind with a deception this large. And yet here we are talking about this topic and um, while a lot of people can come to this topic and not necessarily agree with it 100% I never say that that truly is important what's important is to search for the truth what's important is to ask the questions and there's nothing wrong with asking questions as ridiculous as they might sound what's wrong with just taking a little bit of time looking into it because how you know how can in 2018 this many people believe you know in the fact that uh, we're not on a spinning ball flying through space to me this is startling and as you know putting together the conferences the flat earth international conference last year in raleigh north carolina and then i'm putting together two big ones here one in canada one also in denver colorado for this year you know the attendance is huge and the people that are reaching out we've got people um you got engineers we've got pilots we've got even scientists coming forward in my last documentary film scientism exposed Two, i have a few scientists that you know are coming forward they're even telling stories of really good scientists that are trying to actually you know support the true scientific method and yet they're worried for their job they're worried that if they bring forward the data that they're collecting you know they're going to lose their um, their livelihood so we're dealing with a big boys group now we're dealing with you better get you know you better play along you better go with the you know the theories and if you step out of this you know things are going to look a little rocky for you so there is definitely something going on a little bit more sinister than most people believe with the space agencies with the scientism agencies and this is guess what we're talking about tonight absolutely so what initially got you into this topic like what turned you um <laughs> from wherever you were in your life before flat earth scientism guy um you know basically sure. science heretic <laughs> to where you are now sure well i mean the biggest thing would be at the age of 21 you know i was miraculously saved um you know i was the last person that would ever be one of those guys that would be you know running around with a bible or you know even uh you know preaching from the bible but again you know there was a miracle that happened in my life but part of the the journey after that happened was getting into you know creationism and, and really starting to expose the lies of evolution for me creation science was a big big part of my journey looking at the fact that not only you know is important to believe in something and that's fine to believe something what's important is the truth so for me you know becoming a christian i didn't want to just believe you know in a religion i wanted to know what was the truth and i really took to heart you know what jesus says in john 14 6 i am the way 
the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So for me, I'm kind of like, okay, well, I had to examine this man. If he's claiming to be the truth, you know, either like C.S. Lewis has said, either he's a lunatic, he's a liar, or he's Lord. And so in my investigation, I really started looking into it, and I wanted to know for sure, you know, is, are the claims of this one man true or not? Because really, you know, you can believe in whatever you want, but believing is not important. What the truth is, is what is important. So for me, the, you know, search for truth became paramount. And getting into, you know, the origins and get on, getting into what science had taught me, breaking down the lies was, was really an eye-opener. It wasn't just the fact that I was going against science or I was going against against evolution. Now was a time when I was starting to investigate both sides, where I was finding out that there was not just missing links, there was massive chasms. There were entire, you know, things that really you couldn't scientifically verify. For example, there wasn't one transitional fossil ever found, ever. And yet, you know, they're saying this is scientific proof and this is, you know, there's no debate. And we hear this all the time now with mainstream science. There's no more debate. The right. science is settled. Well, I'm sorry, but science is never settled. It's all about questioning and moving forward. So, again, that was kind of a big part of my journey. But it wasn't until 2015 when, uh, actually, interesting enough, I came across a video, you know, after laughing at Flat Earth for, you know, a couple of years prior, just thinking, who yeah. in the right mind could believe such nonsense? You know, of course, we've always known that we're on a ball. Um, it wasn't until I came across a video really mocking Genesis, and it was an actual video uh, put together not in support of Flat Earth. It was mocking Genesis and showing the literal interpretation of Genesis, showing the firmament, the waters, dividing the waters from the waters. It was showing this kind of cartoon depiction of God creating the world in a really nonsensical way when it came to just the literal view of what Genesis was purporting. And I started looking at it. I'm like, yeah, but that's what the Bible says. Because, I mean, if I was going to be a Bible literalist, believing the six days, you know, that I believed in six-day literal creationism versus millions of years, you know, like evolution had taught, then I'm like, well, why does it say that? So I got really curious. And, again, I went on my journey from there and started coming across different, uh, you know, videos. One of them was Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues. And for me, you know, seeing all these dots being connected, I was like, whoa, this is interesting. Because again, there was a lot of stuff that just didn't add up. And I was like, I want to go down this journey. Because it was like, I wanted to find out about Antarctica. I wanted to find out about like, could it be, you know? So for me, you know, it was just a quest on truth. And I uh, studied the subject for about three months solid before I came out with my YouTube channel, Celebrate Truth. It wasn't until August 2015 that I finally just threw it out there. I was always a vocal guy. You know, people knew me as passionate and I was outspoken. And for years, I was always thinking one day, you know, I would like to take my skills, whether it was, you know, filmmaking or just speaking on a topic. And it wasn't until this topic where it was like, now's the time. And that's when I got onto YouTube in uh, 2015 on this topic. And my first um, video was contemplating what we've been taught about stars. You know, we're, we're taught that there are other suns and they're light years away. And one light year is seven trillion miles. I mean, you start thinking of these distances. And to me, when you start getting into evolution, they talk about millions and millions of years, right? Well, with the universe, they talk about billions and trillions of years, you know? So what, what I said is, wait a minute, could it be that all this stuff is connected? And really, when I stopped and thought about it, you know, for me, already looking at evolution, and I mean, once I had really researched it through Great Creation Ministries, even Ken Hoven and other people like that, that really started completely destroying evolution. I used to have friends in that were really staunch, you know, Dawkins lovers, and, you know, when they would see kind of, you know, how it was getting broken down, they were even surprised. And they're like, well, maybe it's not so airtight as what I thought. So to me, it was like, well, wait a minute. So if evolution, you know, where does evolution come from? And again, it came from the Big Bang. So we had to go back to right to the, you know, supposed nothing exploded and created everything scenario that science teaches us. That's the scientific definition. Nothing exploded and created everything. That's what right. they believe, right? And yet we're the crazy ones that say, well, wait a minute, we think that a God or an intelligent design designed all of this beautiful design. So, but again, science will sit there and say, no, it was a random explosion. So I wanted to go back to the Big Bang. I want to go right back to the start and say, well, wait a minute, if evolution is a lie, then Big Bang has to be a lie. What if for the longest time, as many Christians were doing, they were attaching God to the bang? Instead of saying nothing, they were saying, well, God created the bang, right? God spoke everything into existence. And that was it. The, the debate was over in their mind. And they're like, well, who's sillier? You say nothing. I say God. But what they did is a disservice. Is What they did is they attached God 
to a deception from the very beginning. So I said, you know, hypothetically, what if that's a lie? And what if none of that adds up? And sure enough, when you start looking into Genesis, it talks about the sun, moon, and stars being created after the earth. Well, if you understand Big Bang cosmology or even science, that model, there are no earths, you know, uh, before suns, moons, and stars. Suns exist before earths, you know. So everything was backwards. Everything was further away. If something in the Bible said it was small, science said it was big. If it said it was young, they said it was old. And what I found really interesting, and I tell people this all the time, regardless whether you're coming to this topic, you're laughing at it, you think it's ridiculous, sure enough. But hypothetically, what if you just started looking at every single one of these literal interpretations? And again, I'm coming from a scriptural point of view. There are many people in flat earth that don't at all, you know, they're not religious at one bit. So I want to make that distinction because a lot of people think, oh, that flat earth, that's some religious cult or something. There are people that are Bible literalists and there are a lot of Christians in flat earth, but there are a lot that aren't, you know, there's a lot of people coming to this through the scientific method. There's also people that are very conspiratorial. They're just trying to get, you know, connected connect all the dots, trying to figure this all out. Wait a minute. Whoa. And I say, hypothetically, if what we're saying here is true, there is no bigger lie than this. And I think that's fascinating even in itself. If you're just one of those truth seekers or you like to kind of connect dots, just it's kind of like the matrix. Can you imagine something so grand? It's fun to explore. And most people that explore this, they're blown away at how much proof there is to support the fact that we've been lied to and that we're not on a spinning ball flying through space. Sure. Now, um, yeah, like you said, there's people on both sides, um, and I think uh, a lot of people look at the the topic. It's kind of a you know a double edged sword. Like, I mean, a lot of Christians will aggressively push back against the flat Earth idea. Um, I, I feel like there are probably a lot of people who uh, might hear this and reject, maybe re- even reject faith or Christianity because you know it's the crazy people of Christianity. Uh, do you think that there's you know, harm possibly in that, like people rejecting faith because of the type of thing that you're putting out? No, because I mean, it says the gospel is foolishness to those, you know, again, and for me, the idea that, oh, with whatever I say can somehow impact, you know, the, the gospel or impact Christianity. I mean, Christianity is, is, is large, right? So when we're getting into religion or we're getting into this topic, no, I don't think so. Because again, I, I don't even say that this topic is salvational in the sense that it's absolutely necessary at all when it comes to the bigger picture i think it's fascinating i think it's important that we understand that there is there is an evil force and most people that don't even you know buy into religion they still kind of look at some wicked people that run the world and it's like well what do these guys believe and there's some sort of sinister force here so if all of a sudden this is true then to me the biggest way that they would try to disregard the true you know the truth uh, of a creator is through you know, a means when it comes to scientism. And I think what greater way of doing it through something that's been masqueraded as truth, reality. And when you sit there and say, nope, you know, evolution is true. And yep, we're an accident and we're just an explosion. There is no need for God. So I think one of the biggest ways that they've completely destroyed God in people's minds is through, you know, science. That's why I think it's important to really critically look at science. It's like, just because you hear one day that scientists discovered, you know, five new exoplanets, Well, look into it further just because, you know, people, you know, discover things. So I think that we're giving them way too much power. I think there's way too much authority in science. They come over, you know, as the authoritative, you know, discovering and also validators of all things that are true. And to me, there's nothing wrong with just questioning things, right? Is ask these questions and figure out, you know, what could be going on. But again, whether a person is coming at this and they're not religious at all, that's fine. But what they'll discover that if this topic is true or that we've been lied to on many fronts trying to conceal a creator, then you're left with the, you know, you're left with the idea that, well, wait a minute, if science has lied to me, then it must be true that we were created because there's no other logical explanation. Either, you know, we're an accident and it's all random or there's intelligence you know there's an intelligent designer behind the design there is no other option so you're left with those two you know whether you want to get into religion or not you know that's that's a completely different topic but for me myself as a christian i've looked at the literal interpretation of the bible and i hold i hold that up as you know a big part of my journey but it wasn't just the bible like i said true empirical science proves that we are not on a spinning ball flying through space there's not one scientific experiment to prove the curvature of the earth at eight inches per mile squared 
or the movement of the earth. Now, why is that? In 2018, yes, we got pictures, we got videos, and people say, you stupid moron, have you seen this, have you seen that? I understand that, and you can believe that, and you can believe a picture, you can believe a video, but we all know that videos and pictures can be doctored. Whether you don't want to go that far, that's up to you, but what I'm saying is scientifically, how do you prove the curvature of the earth at eight inches per mile squared. That's the formula at 25,000 miles. I mean, this is science. This is not me bringing up these figures. We should easily be go out and easily do these experiments just to prove it. Or, you know, the movement we're spinning, we're supposedly spinning at the equator a thousand miles per hour. It should be incredibly easy. But what we find is when we look back in history and all throughout history, when they've done experiments using the true scientific method, they've all failed trying to prove the movement of the earth. So to this day, it doesn't exist. Now, I want to go on the record, let anyone know, anyone watching this, if you can go out and you can find an experiment to prove this, you will be famous, okay? Right. So if you're big on you want, you want money, you want power, you want fame, hey, this is a great way to do it. Not only can you debunk these stupid flat earthers, you can come up with the experiment using true science to prove the curvature or the movement of the earth, you're going to be famous. I mean, I'm talking like Einstein, I'm talking like a huge name. So I say I challenge people, go out and actually do this but if, if this can be discovered and this can be proven through the scientific method, I'm done. No more. I'm not hosting conferences. I'm not believing in this nonsense. But I've been at this for almost three years. I'm pleading with people to really come up with it because really we're coming down to a scientific you know, reality here. If it can scientifically be proven that we're on a ball 25,000 miles, right, at eight inches per mile squared when the, you get into the curvature rates and you can all look these figures up, then it is. It is the truth. I mean, that, that to me is the important thing here to understand. Science is good. I love science. Scientism is not. And you guys, everyone listening, if you're holding on to scientism, wow, you know, you really better be careful what you're holding on to because if you find out you're not holding on to true science, then what exactly are you believing to be truth? Sure. So by scientism, do you just mean, uh, I mean, we're, we're told these statistics, uh, we're rocketing through the universe at X amount of miles per hour, and we're rotating at this amount, and we're going around the sun at this amount. Um, we just accept that. Um, is that kind of what you're meaning? Like, not necessarily things that we have a lot of evidence and uh, provable, you know, tests that we can do? And for anyone honestly listening to this, my my first documentary, Scientism Exposed, is free on YouTube. Go watch it because it will really get into depth. And again, the first the first documentary really doesn't even mention this topic. Doesn't mention flat Earth. Right. It really I, starts. I watched it down. and I was yeah. disappointed. I, I was hoping for the flat Earth stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there you go with the sequel. You had to get into part two because sure. it gets deeper into the subject. But what I'm saying is, part of that, the idea of putting together that documentary was exactly for the reason that a lot of people that you know, you send them a flat Earth documentary, they won't give it a time of the day. They're just like, I'm not, I'm not sitting down and watching a documentary documentary for two hours on that topic. I so found that out today really quickly. Yeah, very quick. <laughs> I, I posted you, about it, just said, hey, if you have any questions for a flat earth guy, let me know. And I mean, some of the main ones were ask him, you know, the, the usual YouTube comments, ask him when he sure. was dropped on his head as a child. And that exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. And don't reproduce and, uh, you know, too late on that one. But anyways, right. <laughs> the idea that, yeah. And again, it's un unbelievable to me, just the amount of, of just disgusting comments. And it, like, I have never been in anything, even, even Christianity, I've got less, you know, viral hate when it comes to any topic, but this topic, wow. I mean, retard moron. I mean, all these, oh, you yeah. know, and, and most of these people, it's funny a couple of times, you know, I'm not much for like a debater. I know there's some really good debaters. If you know, somebody really wanted to have a debate, but the odd time I'll challenge someone. I'll be like, come on my show live stream. Let's mm -hmm. do it. No one, no one takes me up in the offer because <laughs> most people that are loudest calling me the moron come on on, you know, come on and we'll do a debate and we'll see. Most times I find that people that are holding on to, you know, even their big bang cosmology, they know a lot less than their model than they understand. They don't know curvature rates. They don't like, you know, you had mentioned about, you know, flying. The idea that we're flying around the sun at 66,000 miles per hour, right? We're traveling around the Milky Way. All these distances, most people don't even really know these numbers, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is if you're going to call someone a moron and a retard, at least really study your model and understand your heliocentric 
concentric big bang cosmology before you call someone a moron because when you start equating all these numbers it's important to kind of figure all that out but yeah exactly and a lot of people will do that so going back to scientism exposed coming together with a documentary that wouldn't mention the topic that doesn't have it in the title you know someone might sit down and watch that and really my whole hope for that was just if it got you questioning one thing maybe looking into NASA a little bit more maybe looking into evolution maybe looking into one little thing if they've lied to you about one little thing then how uh, you know how many other lies have they told you you know what other lies and again to fact check it you could hear something in that documentary and you hear you hear Dawkins in his own voice you hear Neil deGrasse Tyson you hear Bill Nye you know so it's not like I'm saying something you hear the clips yourself and you're like Hmm, I want to see if that's true or I want to see, you know, the idea that, you know, supposedly we went to a quarter of a million miles to the moon in 1960s and 70s. Mm -hmm. But since then, supposedly, you can look this up, any space agency, man has only gone 400 miles. Well, if you start understanding that a quarter of a million miles, why is it that in f almost 50 years, the furthest that man can get in a spacecraft is 400 miles? That's a fraction of a fraction of a percent. Most people seeing that and looking that up and going, my goodness, that he, he's right. You know, they're really going. Well, wait a minute, that's weird, right? So it's it, it kind of that light bulb goes off, and they say, "Why is it?" You know, not just NASA, SpaceX. I mean, you can get into the Russian Space Administration. You get into any of these agencies, all of them. You know, wait a minute, something's weird. All that mm -hmm. technology that we've got, and we can't even go even like a tenth of the distance. It's gotten worse. We're not even a fraction of a fraction of the percent. So something's off. So yeah. in the first documentary, I just go through that. I go through all these inconsistencies. People in the ISS claim that they're, they're gathering all this research and data. So one day, hopefully they can go back to the moon and off to Mars and beyond. And you're like, wait a minute, you're in the ISS. Well, why don't you just go there? It should be a piece of cake. Right. So to me, this is the big thing for anybody that is listening, watching, Understand that the moon landing is pivotal in this in this thing. Look into the moon landing. And so scientism exposed, I get into space, I get into other areas of scientism, and really start breaking down the lies and the inconsistencies and just the weirdness. And if one thing gets you thinking and going on your journey, great. That's all I want to do is just get you going on your own journey for truth. Whatever you discover, whatever you find, uh, is don't listen to me. And I say this all the time in my interviews and in my documentaries, is don't listen to me. Go out and do your own research. But I'm saying this topic is important because, again, it comes down to the origin. It comes down to everything that we've been taught as reality. If, in fact, it's a lie, it's a big deal. So I say, yes, truth is important, and it's important for everyone just to go on that journey. You might not go as far as believing that, you know, the earth is flat. And, again, and we can get into that a little bit more because most times when people think flat earth, they think of boats going over the edge. Mm -hmm. They think of all this stuff. And it's always I've been the first doing, question. Where's exactly. the edge? And I've, been doing, off? And, I, <laughs> and I've been doing all these interviews this week because, again, one of the conferences that uh, I'm doing here in Canada, there's been a lot of activity with the press and stuff. And, again, I, I try to explain to them, first of all, we don't believe that we're flying in space. The idea of a pancake disc right. flying through space, no, we don't believe that at all. Flatter society that most people go to, that's like disinformation. That's to make it look ridiculous. And I know that you're even laughing at flat earth. Well, we even laugh at certain models. We say, no, 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 I see, I, I understand where you're going. A pancake flying in space is ridiculous. The idea that you can just go off the edge, that's ridiculous. So take, give it some time and at least look and see what exactly they believe. If you're going to rip it down and you want to actually destroy it, because most people that become flat earthers went out to debunk it, right? I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many, how, pretty how much many everybody's. people origin story in this period. exactly they say this is ridiculous i'm going out i'm going to debunk this in an afternoon and wait a minute the afternoon turns to a weekend the weekend <laughs> turns to a week and they're like oh my goodness and then all of a sudden they're like whoa and i'm not saying everyone's going to come to that conclusion but if anything go out and, and find out exactly how can this many people believe in these theories but also understand the model itself we don't believe that we're a flying pancake in space right. we don't believe there's an edge we don't believe you could ever fall off there there's no possible way so things like this is important to understand. Not only that, that there's other people that have different models. So the one thing that we all agree on, whether it's myself or Mark Sargent or Marty Leeds or other people, you know, that have even been on the broadcast, is we do not believe that we're on a spinning ball flying through space. But we differ on our ideas and where we're coming from, and we learn from each other, and we ask questions. We're all on this discovery of truth, but we're not at the point where we're like, hey, our model is right, everyone's wrong, or believe us and believe in what we say. No, go out and do your own research. You'll be blown away at what you find out.
Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, to that note, uh, I, like I said, I posted in our forum today, do you have any questions for Robbie? And of course there's the, the typical, uh, how, like, where's the edge? Why don't we have a picture of the edge? How do we not fall off this and this and this? And it's like, it's like, I, I'm trying to give you the information. I, uh, we've talked about this many, many times. And if you want to find out how that works, just look at the flat earth map idea or any <laughs> idea. Like, um, you know, look into it for two seconds. You can find that out if you want to know. Because the, the problem is we can't just keep talking about this. And then every time we bring up the topic and ask if you have questions, start from square zero or below. <laughs> and like... Uh, if you want to know, you need to look into it a little bit for yourself. And I know that, um, well, I went on a, uh, I went on a different podcast recently, actually, as a guest um, called Don't Feed the Trolls. And uh, I went on as a flat earth advocate and did my best, which is pales in comparison to what I'm sure you're going to do here. But um, I, a lot of the things that he asked were, uh, well, it got very heated on his part, not on my part, but he, he's, uh, he comes from like a background of scientists and everything. And one point that he kept bringing up is, yeah, I, okay, so maybe some things don't add up. And I get that, uh, like scientifically, the these, you know, certain measurements don't add up exactly. But I find it a hard stretch to go from, um, you know, I can see a boat further than I should be able to, to the whole earth is flat. And yeah, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, well, I can just speak to it and say that this topic is just so far out there. I mean, yeah. you can probably grasp lizard man run the earth easier than flat earth. <laughs> so, so what I say in conspiracy circles, or I talk about like kind of, you know, a scale. And that's what I did with Scientism Exposed. Now, you might know someone in your family or, you know, a good friend and, you know, they kind of are suspicious about JFK. They're kind of like, hmm, yeah, there might have been another shooter or something weird is going on. I mean, they even released the files, you know. So, right. again, there were inconsistencies. But they look into 9-11 and they say, nope, the official report, 100% agree with everything. Building 7, no, that's all, that's all fine and dandy. And, you know, buildings melt, you know, with fuel and everyone's cool. Then they're not ready for this topic, okay. Right. You've got to kind of walk with them. So what I say in the conspiracy kind of circles is I say if you're dealing with someone on that scale, you got to kind of walk them through it. You got to walk them through 9/11. You got to walk them through. You got to get up even just to the moon landing. Now that's why I say the moon landing is critical because again, if you're listening to this and you're going, yeah, of course they land on the moon, you morons. Then of course all this topics beyond that is just going to look stupid. But I would imagine, and I've done the poll myself, anybody that is open to looking at flat earth, even if they're not 100%, they're really skeptical on NASA, they're right. skeptical on the moon landing, or they just outright do not believe it. That's, it, to me, it's the prerequisite. So, so in, a, in a truth-seeking uh, circle, that's your prerequisite. If you're talking to someone, so that guy that you were, you know, that where it got heated, guarantee he was like, absolutely, they landed on the moon, right. 100%. Because the reality is you won't find someone that says, no, of course I didn't land on the moon and no, I wouldn't buy into any of this other stuff. Most people are open to it because again, if they lied to us about the moon landing, wait a minute, if they can't get to the moon, how far can they go? Well, so far in 50 years, the furthest they're going is 400 miles. They're saying, and I don't even believe they're going that far, but again, that's what they're saying. That's a little suspicious, mm -hmm. but let's just say that, you know, whatever, you know, you believe in the SpaceX, you know, throwing a Tesla Roadster up in space and all this stuff to Mars. And the fact of the reality is they're not putting men, you know, that far and they did it no problem in the sixties and seventies. So the moon landing is the prerequisite and understand this topic. You can come to it three different ways. You can come to a conspiratorial. So if you're talking to someone conspiracy circles there you go you can come to it from we talked before religion or biblical or literal interpretation because there is a ton of bible verses to support the fact uh that we are not moving and we're not a ball flying through space you know it doesn't exist so i'm sorry somebody could sit there and, and look at it and say oh no i don't believe it and i'm a christian and how dare you find me the verse that supports the fact that the earth is moving first of all forget the shape forget the shape i i always tell people the shape is important people don't worry about the shape let's just backtrack and get into this whole idea of the big bang cosmology and if you're a bible literalist try to support it biblically try to support the big bang try to support the fact that we're even moving what you find is the opposite that we're stationary we're fixed we don't move what we see when we look in the sky, even with star trails, with, you know, time-lapse photography, is we see, you know, complete circles around Polaris, the North Star. You know, we see our, our like, our observations, our senses tell us 
something. We are taught otherwise. No, 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 of course we're moving, but I don't feel it. No, 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 but we're moving. So what I'm saying is everything is counter to even our senses that God gave us. He gave us our senses for a reason. To go against all of our senses doesn't even make sense, you know, first of all. But again, you have that. You have also, you know, the conspiracy, but you also have the scientific. So when you come to this just purely on the scientific method, Try it. Try it. Use the empirical method and try to scientifically prove the curvature of the earth or the movement of the earth. NASA, forget pictures, forget, oh, you dropped on your head, or you stupid idiot, we've got scientists. No. <laughs> Again, that's not scientific. Just because a scientist discovers or says something, we can go out and we can scientifically prove these things. That is good. Science is good. So go under the good scientific method. Don't go under the hypothetical, theoretical uh, black holes, dark matter nonsense that they're spouting these days. You know, they're actually admitting that, you know, they say that usually in science, if they're off by a factor of two or three, that's a big deal. That's not good at all. They admit in cosmology that they're off by a factor of 120. That's 120 zeros off. That They admit this. So when they're saying in cosmology, they are so far off track, either even more off with evolution. So again, if you're going to sit there and be skeptical on evolution, well, why don't you look at cosmology? They're admitting they don't even know. They don't have a clue. You know, so all these things they're telling us, like the distance, how far a star is, how big a star is, everything. They don't have a clue. A star has never been measured. There is no scientific way to actually measure a star precisely at all. They can come up with theories. They can come up with all these ideas. So again, the idea is just question it, question it. Go through the idea of questioning your world. There's nothing wrong about it. And stop with the insults. You know, the whole idea that you just have to insult someone. The reality is that most of these there, flat Roger earthers Paxton? that you ridicule. Roger Paxton, you, listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you if you actually form. were actually to go on a debate, you probably would be embarrassedly, you know, again, it would be embarrassing for you um, because, again, they're very equipped when it comes to the methodology, when it comes to the models, when it comes into all the figures. That's the cool thing about this, this uh, topic. Even if you discover this topic, you will actually equip yourself with learning more about the heliocentric Big Bang. If you want to hold to that and you want to believe in that, that's fine. You will actually learn more about it. You will learn, like I said, the eight inches per mile, the curvature rates. I mean, that's fascinating. But again, we got a problem. If we're at eight inches per mile squared and you're looking at something through optics at 50 miles away, wait a minute, it should be a half a mile below the curvature of the earth. How is it we're seeing it? Ask mm -hmm. yourself these questions. And we're seeing this everywhere. People doing experiments all over the world. They're zooming in on stuff over 100 miles away. At over 100 miles away, it should be like 1.4 miles below the curvature of the earth. Right. Wait a minute. How are we seeing this? So on a ball, you know, at 25,000 miles, you know, getting into these th these formulas, there is no way you should be able to see these objects. And again, people will say, well, it's a mirage. Well, we know what a mirage looks like. It's wavy, it's inverted. Listen, you can come up with all these ideas, but when you start asking the questions, why is it that we're seeing objects in the distance that on a ball at eight inches per mile square dropping with the curvature rates, we should not be able to see them. This is the question that a lot of scientists right now, um, you know, are looking at, you know, everywhere. And more and more are going to do this. So get ready. You can laugh at it, mock it. But again, this thing is getting larger and larger. And there are more people coming to this topic because, again, they're looking, they're discovering, they're asking the questions about their world. And they're realizing that there is a lot more than meets the eye. Hey, Dan Smots here. I'm taking a second to interrupt myself talking to talk about myself because, you know, I don't get paid a penny for the hours and hours that I put into creating this show for you guys in your greedy little ears. And I've got a family to feed. To make that happen, I run my own media business called Goulash Media. If you have a need in anything from video production to graphic design to audio production and beyond, you can get it all for a painfully fair price at Goulash Media. In video, I do weddings, music videos, commercials, pageants, plays, etc., etc., etc. For design, I do photo editing. Editing, album art, logos, branding, business cards, merchandise, you name it. For audio, I do engineering, production, editing, jingles, and, well, podcasts. So if you've got a media need of any kind, or if you'd just like to give a little something back and help keep my children fed, check out all the endless options at my website, goulashmedia.net. That's goulash, G-O-U-L-A-S-H, media.net, where we cater to the little guy with the big vision. <sighs> okay. Like we said before, everybody that starts to dig into this this theory in any capacity, giving it a, a shred of thought, it should only take like 30 seconds to debunk it if every measurement that they tell us is correct. Um, was there a specific like, was there a specific point that you can 
uh, point to like a specific piece of evidence that made you think, uh, might be onto something here. Um, like any, uh, I mean, there's tons and tons of evidence. I, I don't like to be the guy who says, uh, if you want to know, look into it yourself, but we, it's an hour show, so we can't cover every single little shred sure. of evidence, but is there like one specific thing that you would point to? Sure. I mean, like I just I mentioned about seeing things in the distance, right? Another thing was no matter if you're on a beach or on a mountain or in a, you know, weather grade balloon, you know, 120,000 feet, you know, in the in the sky, the horizon stayed at eye level, right? So if you're dealing with a ball, the higher you went in altitude, the horizon would drop. And what we're seeing is the, the opposite. We're seeing the horizon staying at a High level, no matter what altitude you're at. I mean, these things were really interesting. They were curious. Uh, but again, for me, it was just nonstop evidence after evidence after evidence. I mean, I don't know if I could just hold on to this if I was looking into the proofs, if there was one or two. I mean, I still might be, uh, you know, it might be a little bit shaky, you know. But again, there were so many. It just continued to snowball, and and more and more proofs would would surface. I mean, for me, and this was kind of you know my my discovery and my journey. For me, though, what convinced me was the Bible, right? Being a literal Bible literalist, that was what convinced me. But just sure. like in my journey, when I when I'm, you know at the age of twenty one, when when uh, my life you know miraculously changed, I still didn't just go off on my own direction and believe everything. I still was one of those guys that was hungry for the truth, and I was hungry to know. No, I wanted to be. I wanted to know for sure. I wanted to know show, for sure about this Jesus guy. I wanted to know for sure that maybe. Well, wait. A minute, well, what if evolution is true? What if God used evolution, you know, to create, you know, all these sort of things? So for me, I didn't just believe anything. I still, I was hungry for the truth. So the same way when it came to this topic, even though I believed it because the Bible said it, and again, I, I could, I could just believe in what the Bible said in supporting the fact that we did move. That uh, you know, it was a young Earth instead of you know millions of years old. I still wanted to go out and see. Wait a minute. Using the scientific method, there should be a reason to kind of validate that, right? To support the fact that if we're not on a ball, then again, if I went out using my senses, if I went out using the scientific experiment and tried to do you know experimentation to prove the fact that if we're not on a ball, we should be able to see pretty far further than what they're saying on a ball. Mm -hmm. This is what led me to believe all of these things. So I found it very very fascinating. Um, just to see how many different things came to light and all the different things, whether it's, you know, what about the edge? What about, you know, seasons? What about, you know, and you see these funny memes where it shows like the sun, you know, lighting up the entire earth and it's day, right. you know, there's no day and night. Again, all these things, when you start really looking into it, you know, you find out that it all makes sense when you're dealing with a smaller sun and a closer in proximity to the earth rather than a sun that's 93 million miles away and that, you know, the, 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 the size that they tell you it is. So what I'm saying is if you take the idea of what they purport the sun being and the size and how far away it is, then yeah, flat earth becomes ridiculous. I understand that. But what you have to do is you have to start from scratch. So if you're going to ridicule this, laugh at this, and you want to debunk it, at least come to it and debunk it based on all the facts, understanding right. what most flat earthers believe the sun to be, what they believe the planets to be, what they believe the stars to be. Don't look at modern day scientism when it comes to telling you know what stars are the fact that oh all stars are other suns sorry but no they're not other suns they're distinctly different and it's a fascinating study so each one of these things coming back to it and discovering truly what stars are what the moon is what the sun is all these things it's really fascinating but it will give you an idea of what flat earthers believe or what people questioning you know uh, modern day cosmology when it comes to the big bang heliocentric universe what we've been taught and to me, there's nothing greater than discovering your world and finding out, you know, what the truth is. You know, and I say this all the time to people, why do you believe what you believe? Is it because you were taught something? Is it because you read something in a book? Is it was because a teacher told you? Is it because you saw something on TV? Why do you believe what you believe? So ask yourself that question and go for it. That's all you need to do. Go for it. And there's nothing wrong with discovering your world. Uh, you know, using the scientific method and not listening to what man has taught you. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, now, as we stated, uh, there's a lot of different people in the flat earth movement who believe a lot of different things. Uh, call them maybe denominations of <laughs> the flat earth movement. Um, but, uh, you know, some take it in the spiritual direction. Some take it as like alien enclosure. Some take it in a whole bunch of different directions. Um, I, I think uh, Mark Sargent, 
uh, at least back when I last listened to him, he took it in kind of an alien direction. Uh, in your documentary, it talk you talk about how you know um, the the whole alien idea is is kind of a deception. But I mean, you had Mark Sargent at your your conference, and you've referenced him a couple times tonight. Um, do you think that that is detrimental? I, I'm not saying that. I, I don't know for sure if that's where he is now. I haven't heard from him in a while, but yeah. do you think that is a problem? No, we all we all have different beliefs uh, within like flat Earth. That's the one thing is like there's not one common you know belief system where we all believe the same thing. So everyone holds to kind of different ideas. I hold to a biblical view of our enclosed cosmology, right? So when we're getting into aliens, uh, for me, I believe it is a deception, but I believed aliens were a deception even before I came to this topic. Sure. But I get into the alien deception a lot more in Scientism Exposed 2. So in the sequel, I go really in depth because again, the one big question you get you get told all the, or asked all the time is why would they lie? Why would they lie? So the question is, why would they lie? But also, what would they prepare us for? Because it's not just a lie. That's not the end. That's a means to the end. So what I would say is, is watch the documentary because it really gets tied together really well to show you that, yeah, there is an agenda and there is a plan. So the whole alien deception, the fact of aliens from other planets, all this idea, the fact that it's getting leaked into the mainstream. If this was really true, it wouldn't even be leaked. The media wouldn't even tolerate it. The idea that it's getting out there is all part of this kind of deception in my mind. So for me, when it comes to the idea of um, alien deception, when it gets into the idea of other planets, no, there isn't. We're in an enclosed world. Think kind of like the Truman Show. And for anyone that's watched that movie, it's a, it's a great uh, movie to watch just to even look at it from a hypothetical standpoint. But it's intriguing how, you know, Truman only understood his world based on what he was brought up in. And if everyone was teaching you something, well, what would we believe? And there's some great movies out there that have showed the same idea that, that children were brought up. And what they did as an experiment is, that they, you know, the 13th century. And they, they made all these children believe that this is kind of the age they were living in, in kind of a, an enclosed kind of community. Well, you take this on a grand scale, and it gets incredibly interesting. Now, when you see the Truman Show, there's some things that obviously would be laughable, but the premise is, is really the same. You know, uh, you know, creator watching down on us, being in there, you know, being cared for in that way, because Truman was, you know, incredibly cared for. But Truman definitely wanted that freedom. He wanted to explore. He wanted to take off. He wanted to do whatever. So, again, there's some parallels in there I find very, very striking and, and interesting. So, there are some people that hold to enclosed cosmology that we're in kind of like a snow globe. There's other people on Flat Earth that don't. They believe that we're on this plane. There's other flat earthers that believe all sorts of different ideas. But again, what they all hold to and what we all have the similar belief on is that we're not on a spinning ball flying through space. So I guess that's what kind of unifies us. And we're all skeptical based on the scientism narrative. We're all uh, skeptical when it comes to what NASA is telling us, you know, mm -hmm. what they're seeing, you know, um, you know, 18, uh, you know, trillion miles away with their magical lenses on their magical telescopes. I mean, the idea that you can see trillions of miles with any type of lens is laughable. But the idea that they can just kind of say whatever they're seeing and we believe it, that scientists discovered, all these ideas, really, I get into it with my documentaries, Scientism Exposed, you watch the first one, but getting into the sequel, it gets deeper into the agenda and it also gets into things like Antarctica. I think Antarctica is another really interesting thing where you get into the interesting alien activity or different things that have been going on down in Antarctica, but also how it's the one place that has been kind of sectioned off by all these different countries. It's the longest standing peace treaty in the entire world. Right. Look into the Antarctica Treaty. It's fascinating because you have all these people that were trying to divide up Antarctica because it was told by Admiral Byrd that there were more resources for the world 10 times over. There was uranium and there was like gold and there was all this amazing stuff down there. And yet something happens and they all clear out of there. They sign this peace treaty and they say it's only going to be for science and, you know, it's military, and that nobody can go there. Now, people will say, well, of course I can go to Antarctica. Sure you can. You could, you could basically ask your government. You have to write a letter. You can get approval. Then you can pay like twenty dollars or $30,000 to go there. It's incredibly expensive. Now, once you get there, you're going to have a tour guide. You can take some pictures with some penguins because the, the only thing that lives down there is penguins. But if you say, hey, I want to go backpacking. I want to go journey. No, 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 no. 
That ain't loud. And if you think that you can actually go freely roam Antarctica, you're sadly mistaken. It is the only place in the world where you're not allowed to freely roam. Look into Antarctica, because for me, you had mentioned other things that, you know, what was that tipping point? What were those things that really started waking you up? From connecting the dots, Antarctica, wow, it was something Absolutely. fascinating. And I would say for anyone, just look into Antarctica and find out why all the secrecy, why all the weirdness, you know, just look into it. I mean, you could spend a whole weekend just looking at Antarctica. And I think for many people, they're going to want to go deeper and deeper when they understand all the secrecy and the weirdness that goes on. I mean, they just had a bunch of, uh, you know, people going down to Antarctica. Just type that in, look in the news, find out what's going on in Antarctica. And I think, you know, like even the map that you have in the very back, what I find fascinating is that's the official UN flag uh, that you have on in the back. And what's interesting is there is something that's missing on that. First of all, most flat earthers would hold to the, it's called the aqua distant uh, map when it comes to as a muffled uh, map. And that's what's purported there. That is pretty much, I would say a lot of flat earthers hold to that, that map. Well, interesting enough, the UN does as well, too. So it's not a flat earth map that's in the back there. That's the UN map. But what's interesting is there's there's a country missing. That's right, Antarctica. What's interesting right. is you see a border. You see kind of the leaves going around it. What a lot of flat earthers would believe is that you can't fall off the edge because we're surrounded by like an ice shore that there is. And again, you can look at the pictures yourself. There is like 100 feet of ice, you know, in Antarctica. It, so, again, you look into the military operations like Operation High Jump. They had an operation going down there, Operation High Jump. What's even more interesting is when you look into the military operations in the 50s and 60s, you got Operation Fishbowl. Right. Fishbowl. I mean, you can't even make this stuff up, right? You got Russia and the U.S. sending up, you know, rockets into the upper atmosphere, blasting away, you know, detonating. And you, you're going, wait a minute, what's going on? But that, that, that military exercise that Russia and the U.S. were both, the U.S. portion of it was called Operation Fishbowl. There's mm-hmm. Operation D- Deep Freeze, but Operation High Jump, Operation Fishbowl. And it gets even more startling when you really start researching these things. So, again, things like Antarctica in the back missing on the U.N. flag. Again, mm-hmm. looking at that map itself, most flat earthers would hold to the idea that, yeah, they would say 100%, but they'd say there's a lot of things that we would hold to when it comes to that map that's in the back. But with what you're seeing in the back there, that's not flying through space. There is no space. We're stationary. Everything revolves around us. We're stationary. We don't move. And again, that's the whole idea. So when you stop and think about the idea that we're stationary and that everything everything moves and we don't, but yet we're not in space. Space is above us in the sense. But space and what we've been taught is a lie. The whole endless idea that's ever expanding. Uh, these are the type of things that you start to critically start really asking questions and go, wait a minute. Well, they say they're in Pluto. They say they're on Mars with rovers. But the reality is they can't get very far with man in their crafts anymore. But, hey, they can send dummies like Starman in the Tesla Roadster, you know, and deceive the world. And most people, I had people ringing me up that think I'm, you know, a moron or a retard for believing in flat Earth. And yet they're saying, dude, sums up with that car. I'm going to look into a few (laughs) things. So it was almost like they went too far with the SpaceX nonsense because a lot of people – you know, are starting to look into it and going, wait a minute, people are believing that's real? That's not a joke? I'm like, no, that they're, they're saying that's real. Right. Really. <laughs> so and these are people that are skeptical. They aren't skeptical at all about space. They love NASA. They're like, wait a minute, that's kind of ridiculous. I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> wait a minute. You look at the extreme temperatures, you know, when you start getting into the thermosphere, when you start getting into the idea of being in space, I mean, that was a regular car that uh, Elon Musk said. It was just regular car. Mm-hmm. Yep. The tires were perfect. You know, the tires didn't blow. You know, the paint's not, you know, melting. And they're in temperatures of 2,000 degrees. Look up the temperatures in the thermosphere. You know, these are the type of things we're asking the questions. And yet science or scientism do not have accurate, you know, definitions of the answers that will really give us the idea of what our world is. And we need to come to the truth. And we need to ask these questions. And there's nothing wrong with holding these people's feet to the fire and saying, well, wait a minute, come to the table. Let's debate these ideas. But no, they just laugh and ridicule and say, no, we would never debate you silly people. And it's like one by one, they're going to have to, because as this continues to grow, these community people, you know, in all different countries, all different languages are starting to investigate the world. They've been taught Uh, at some point there will be a tipping point and they will have to come to the table. But the tragic thing here is that the world is going to discover that science that they held on to that will have all the answers to dismiss these moron flat earthers. It's not going to happen. They're just going to be able to show pictures. They're going to show video, but they're not going to be able to come using the true scientific method and prove our world based on the curvature and based on the fact that we're flying around the universe at untold speeds. 
Absolutely. And there's a lot covered there, as you do very well, and I love it. Um, but uh, back on the Antarctica stuff, that was some of the stuff that first got me interested in it. Um, I mean, you've got this Antarctica Treaty. Like you said, it's a, it's a well of resources, as Admiral Byrd pointed out, and yet we all agree. I mean, we've got all these countries can't agree on a single thing any other time ever in the existence of humanity. But when it comes to the USS space station and when it comes to the Antarctica treaty, we're all just good pals and we're in cahoots on the same thing. <laughs> I just found that uh, very, very um, fishy, very suspicious at the very least. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, if you're one of those type of people that like to question things and things don't add up, that's what this whole journey is about. And I think that's what uh, this discovery has led to is, is really, wait a minute, something doesn't make sense. I mean, yeah, I mean, the world has been, you know, continually fought with wars and enemies and yet you've got like 30 nations, mm -hmm. the longest standing peace treaty over the fact that it's like, yep, we're going to patrol the border. No one's going to go there unless they have permission and they can only go with a tour guide to take pictures with penguins on the, you know, the, <laughs> the shoreline, but you're not allowed to go explore there. Now here's the really intriguing part. You would think with all the corporations with all like BP oil, you would think of all the amazing money that they'd be able to partition and say, we want to go down there and drill because there's supposed to be oil. There's supposed to be lots of resources in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. They're not even allowed to go. So you're kind of going, wait a minute, corporations aren't even allowed to go to Antarctica. Something is very, very interesting with all the world being run by money and, you know, follow the money. And you think, hey, they've got untold amounts of money. They could just buy anything. They could buy up politicians. One place they cannot buy is space and they, they cannot buy Antarctica. You know, this whole idea of like SpaceX and Virgin Galactic being private companies, don't deceive yourselves. Start following the trail. NASA's in bed with them, you know, with all these different space agencies. They're working with them in cahoots. And if you honestly think that the first, the first rockets were discovered not by NASA, they were done by SpaceX, like all this great breaking technology. Again, this is all part of the deception. I know it seems like a stretch. Just start looking into it and see the idea that we were supposed to have men, you know, to the moon multiple times over. Virgin Galactic has like promised it for years over years. You can see the failed promises with both these agencies, yet they take millions and millions of dollars for space travel from people and they're still waiting. And I tell people, you got to wait for a long time. They're not going to the moon because they've never been to the moon. And a lot of people think that's crazy, but understand that now the mission is Mars. Well, why would they go to Mars? Because our optics our technology has caught up to the moon. We can verify if they land on the moon, unless they go to the dark side of the moon where no one can see. Right. But the idea that, I mean, I have a P900 camera. I can zoom in like incredibly close on the moon. I can't zoom incredibly close on Mars. But the whole idea is going off to Mars. You ever notice that now the ambition is going to Mars, 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 right? They've moved off the idea of the moon. People say, well, they don't need to go to the moon. They've already been there. I'm sorry, what about Russia? What about China? What about all the women, lib you know, the, the feminist groups out there? You would think they'd be storming NASA saying, we demand to have the first woman to walk on the moon. Right. Isn't that weird? No woman's <laughs> walked on the moon. So I say all the time to women to get them all up on the roars. I'm like, you know what? You need to start a patrician and say, we demand, we want a woman to walk on the surface of the moon. I just find it funny. Um, you know, you start getting into all these ideas. It hasn't happened. They even admit the fact in the ISS that it can go no further than low Earth uh, atmosphere. You start getting into the idea, look into all the space agencies, the furthest that they claim to go is 400 miles, you know, even less than that. Yet the moon supposedly is a half a million miles away. Right. 1960s and 70s, you start looking into the megahertz power on the Apollo, it's less than an iPhone 3. Yes, iPhone <laughs> 3. Most of us have an iPhone 6, 7. The, mega person, the megahertz power in our iPhones is like a thousand. It's like 10,000 times the computing power in the Apollo. And yet we're led to believe that they can go in there no problem. Do, 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 you know, under the moon and back. But yeah, this is the idea. So I always sit and say, look, this, this topic seems silly. It seems ridiculous. And trust me, I laughed at it myself. I thought it was ridiculous. And I rolled Same. my eyes and said, there has to seriously be something wrong with someone that could believe that we're on a flat earth. I mean, these guys are ridiculous. I believed it. So I empathize. I'm right with you. And that's why I'm, I don't mind people saying you're a moron or saying these discouraging things to me is because I would have said the same thing. I would have right. been typing the same. I'd have been the Mr. Troll, you know, <laughs> I'd have been like, what a bunch of, so I'm cool with that to a degree, but really just look into it and find out the world that you live in. And if you discover that it's been the lie, wow, it's going to change your whole world for sure. Literally. 
Absolutely. Um, and now a, a lot of conspiracy theorists or enthusiasts or whatever is the acceptable term. I know us, us crazy people are not keen on conspiracy theorists, but um, <laughs> a, a lot of us seem to th- uh, seem to feel conspiracy, like the whole conspiracy realist. Sure. Conspir- a lot of conspiracy people <laughs> seem to think that the whole flat earth movement is kind of a, a psyop or a distraction away from something else, some bigger issue that we're all missing, something more local and important. Um, like, what's your take on that? Well, what I would see with with the community is what I have seen, you know, when all of a sudden it's not like we get together, for example, like at the Flat Earth Conference, we get together, but we would talk about so many other issues. And what I said before about the moon landing or 9-11 or JFK, the one thing I find about Flat Earthers is because maybe they're so open to actually even looking into this topic, they've already kind of gone up that ladder. They've already gone through 9-11, chemtrails, GMOs, vaccines, you know, they've, you know, they're just, maybe they're the one that we're the hungry ones that we want the upper echelon of the conspiracies. Right. So what I'm saying is we don't just talk about the shape of the earth. We talk about everything because if hypothetically this is true, it is the mother load of lies. It is the umbrella, I say, that all of everything else fits under. Mm-hmm. Climate change, you get into global warming, you're getting into vaccinations. Everything all falls together. Like this whole idea of when you understand that they lied to us, because most people can't understand, well, wait a minute, it doesn't make sense. Why would they lie to us about, you know, who cares if it's a triangle or a cube? Right. But it does. It makes a lot of sense. It, it does. Uh, there's control factors. There's other things. And that's, it's something that you have to go on your own journey to discover. Me just saying, this is the reason they'd lie. Watch my, you know, go to my YouTube channel, Celebrate Truth. Watch Scientism Exposed. I go through this. And if you're tracking through the first one, you're going to love Scientism Exposed too, because I go deeper into it and you start to go, wait a minute. Wow, it's starting to make sense. For a lot of people, I get I get so many emails from people saying, wow, it really has helped me wake up to the lies of the world and understanding it. But the idea that the people that come to this topic are just distracted, we talk about all the other important topics from false flags to, vaccin- to vaccinations to um, you know, GMOs to you name it. We're probably going to talk about it, right? So to me, the idea that, well, we're distracted and we're not focusing on real issues – if anything, the opposite is true. We're focusing on all the issues, but we're saying, look into this, because if a person looks into this and they discover it to be true, they're going to be open to everything. 9-11, 9-11 right. will be a piece of cake for them. It won't be a, it won't yeah. be a stretch. It won't be a stretch for them to understand that the government could lie to them about the Twin Towers when the fact is they've lied to us about the world. Right? If you so find every, the foundation, then there all you the go. rest of it should be pretty easy to accept. So, so, I, so I tell people hypothetically, if them lying to us about our world is true, hypothetically, then it's not a stretch to understand they could lie to us about a whole lot of other things. So it really opens you up to understanding your world and looking into every issue. So for me, you know, we don't just talk about the shape of the earth. You know, we talk about everything, certain things that are in the news, right? The latest, you know, shooting that happened, all these Mm -hmm. things. We're talking about these issues. We're critically looking at and we're starting to piece it together and say, wait a minute, the evidence is not supporting the official uh, narrative based on mainstream media. Mainstream media is coming to this with different slants, with different ideas. Even the witnesses are saying we saw something different. You know, there's contradictory statements with the witnesses that were at the scene. And yet we're the, we're the crazy ones to for questioning the official mainstream narrative. So again, to me, this, if you'll critically start looking at the evidence of like SpaceX or NASA or scientism, you'll look at what mainstream media tells you. You'll look at what the, you know, the Federal Reserve is, you know, trying to cram down your throat with the Federal Reserve banking system with the central system you know all these things it's like an inner web that kind of comes together and you know just like the map behind you you understand there's a grid and what's intriguing about the un flag another thing i'll bring up because i keep looking at it through this interview is there's 33 (laughs) sectors have you ever noticed that there's 33 sectors when you start counting it there's 33 now some people say oh 33 33 it's an intriguing number when you get into the 33 degrees of mason when you get into illuminati all these things it's interesting because as you move up the steps you know in that that ladder, that's the upper echelon. And again, there is kind of a secrecy and there is kind of a cabal that does run the world. If you haven't even looked into that, then forget this topic. You need to go back. <laughs> you need to start looking into the global elite, you know, the globalism. Again, we're getting into these terms. Those yeah. terms are there for a reason. But again, that's the intriguing part is you need to go back. You need to discover the fact that our world, our education system, the media, the government, but even the controlling elite, the banking system, 
This has all been put in place and it runs the world. It truly does. There are literal men like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and you need to look into it because when you understand that they kind of are at such a high level that they don't even answer to presidents and that presidents are puppets, when you understand that idea, everything else kind of comes together easier. And again, what's wrong with going to the absolute furthest end of conclusion here that they could be lying to us about the reality of, you know, what we all know and believe. Why is it that so many people and credible, smart people, intellectual people, engineers, pilots, scientists, everyone, doesn't matter what your belief, religious, non-religious, they're all coming to this topic and saying, wow, we have been lied to on a grand scale and there is so much proof to support it. Not one or two things. There's a reason why there's international conferences happening in different countries around the world. And yes, I said around, you can go around a flat earth. That's another misconception. Duh, you know, round. Yes. We'll, we'll get into some of the very simple questions sure. uh, in, in the, in the bonus stuff for sure. sure. Um, uh, now, one of the main things that, uh, of course, always comes up is, you know, scientists are smarter. Like, P this has been established because all these people agree that, you know, it is the way it is, and it is, it has to be. You have to accept that because you're not a scientist. You can't find out, you can't, you know, do the same tests as they can. You can't possibly prove that they're wrong. Um, there's that, and there's also the obvious question, who are these elite, who are the people that are tricking these scientists or convincing these scientists to give us false information? Sure. And I mean, a lot of people actually think it's one big, massive conspiracy. But again, you understand that there's a lot of really great people that work at NASA. There's a lot of people that work on spacecraft that they really truly believe that that spacecraft or that rover is now on Pluto. But so they don't have to be in on the deception. And furthermore, the idea that like all these scientists are out there deceiving the world. They wake up in the morning and they're there having breakfast with their family. And they're like, he, 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 I get to go out and deceive the world. No, it's nothing sinister like that. They were taught by their their parents. You know, they were taught by their professors. All it is is just it's an indoctrinated system where we believe what we're taught. So no, there's nothing sinister about the fact that there's so many people in on this i go so far as to say that this this whole thing is spiritual in nature there's people there's there's like a force there's an evil presence behind the entire scene so no everyone's kind of indoctrinated brainwashed it's like the matrix if you wake up to the matrix you understand the world you live in so really it's a good uh, you know way of looking at this that no you don't know you honestly laugh at anyone else that doesn't believe it right it's like in the matrix if someone said hey this is all you know this is not true they'd laugh at you get out of here of course it is look at the steak it's real you know i'm eating this steak it tastes delicious so in the matrix anyone would laugh at anyone with an idea the only way someone you know would have uh not believed it is if they were woken up to the lie or if you know of course they had a decision saying look if you take this pill there's no going back you can't wake up from it and probably you're going to be you know resentful and you're not going to want to go that way and i would say the unfortunate thing with coming to this reality is you can't go back and they're like, once you go flat, they say you can't go back. And it's true, right? Once you go flat, you never go back. Because you can't go back. When you actually see the world for what it is and every critical angle and when you try to earnestly try to find it. I, I was doing an interview the other day and I was saying, honestly, I would love for this not to be true. So I could go back to regular life. People aren't ridiculing me, calling me names, laughed at. I mean, I've never been laughed at more in my life. I, you know, I don't want to be known for this topic. I want to be known for any other topic, you know, under the sun except this topic. But here I am, you know, and I say that I didn't choose this topic. This topic chose me. So to me, it's a, provi a providential type of thing. But no, a lot of people don't have to be under this deception. You know, I, I would say that Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, he thinks that all these flat earthers are, are morons because he probably believes it. He doesn't believe that he's out deceiving people. He believes he's telling the truth. He believes the reality of the world that's been presented. The fact that, you know, he believes that nothing created everything, that he comes from stardust. He believes that. He believes he's thankful to the stars because, you know, like Lawrence Krauss says, and you probably heard that in the, the yeah. documentary, Scientism Exposed, um, he says, don't forget, you know, don't thank Jesus for dying for you. Thank the stars. So these guys really do have a spirituality behind it. These guys do have, you know, an allegiance. Their allegiance is to scientism. That's what they're holding to. Don't, don't uh, understand that you will hold something up as your God in life. You could say, oh, I'm not religious at all. But if you're holding up scientism, that's your God. That's what you hold. That's what you cling on to. And uh, again, you don't have to be deceiving anyone. I don't think someone listening to the show is, thinks you're deceiving people. They think that we're deceived. So again, that's the whole mentality. No, I don't think that uh, everyone would have to be in on the lie. I just believe that it's something that they were taught, that their parents taught them, their professors, their teachers, just like we were all taught. We all... I believed in the globe and I was a spinning ball flying through space five oh, yeah. years ago, five years ago. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Same. Um, so, I mean, I, I could talk to you for literally hours on this topic. Um, we are an hour show, so I want to keep it a little, a little tight. Um, I, I, Honestly, I want to dig more into the spiritual stuff than we did, and I want to dig into a bunch of different topics. But we don't have. We, don't we got have another time. We could do. We could do part two. We could do part two down the yeah. road. I'd be down before we do bonus and hopefully do part two in the future. Uh, I got to know how does your family react to this? Like, I mean, I mean, you host this big conference for basically science heresy. <laughs> like, uh, what what do they say about that? Like, how do they respond? Oh, you know, overall, I mean, they've been pretty supportive. I mean, I, they obviously don't believe what I believe, but they've been pretty supportive. I mean, now getting into my greater family, I mean, I've had some pretty crazy responses. My my brother-in-law removed me off Facebook. Uh, it, it, like like I said, I've never seen a topic that gets people so heated. And so yeah. what? You know, so what? If we want to believe that we're not on a spinning ball, <laughs> what's the big deal? But people get angry. They get yeah. livid. I mean, I put it this way. I'm doing a conference at the at the largest mall in North America in Canada in the summer. So Edmonton, Alberta, Canada as West Edmonton Mall. Well, I got a call from the mall the other day and they've been getting so many people, you know, complaining to the mall. You know, agree to that the they're just venue. allowing you to come and talk. Yeah, they're saying you need to put <laughs> your foot down. And they're just kind of laughing, you know, but they're saying, don't they understand it's a business? I mean, you're doing a conference, an international conference at our facility, but people are mad. They're angry, right? <laughs> so I just find this funny. It's like we could have a conference talking about lizard people run the world and people right. wouldn't care at all. They'd just be like, oh, a bunch of conspiracy theorists. There's something about this topic that get people irate that make them ridicule, laugh at it. Uh, I mean, I've never seen so many different emotions tied to one topic. So to me, this is the intriguing part. But when it comes to my family, you know, there's ones that are supportive. Uh, My wife was kind of the one that, you know, I was worried about the most because, you know, I'm Mm -hmm. studying this for three weeks and I'm like, oh, I got to come to my wife (laughs) and tell her, I believe the earth is flat. This is not a very similar experience with my wife. So this is not good. This is not good. (laughs) But the interesting thing is my wife accepted it in literally 10 seconds. I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. I just said, I think the earth is flat. And she's like, if the Bible says it, then I believe it. That was it. And the, mm. the amount of conviction and That is not the same as my wife, but. <laughs> my wife, I was like, I was like, shame on me for not even being able to have faith like that. Like, sure. like, God bless her, but she just had the faith and conviction to be like, if the Bible says it, then I believe it. That was it. So that was cool. So I've always had the support of my wife and she's obviously been massively supportive. She's been helping me with the conferences. The one that I had, the very first conference ever in the history of the world was in Raleigh, North Carolina. You know, we had like over 500 people. We had the media. I mean, we had ABC Nightline, BBC. We had CBS. We had uh, HBO, like Vice News. Uh, It was an incredible time. And again, they were all there. And even talking to them, even off air, they were saying something interesting is going on because they can't just discount it as a bunch of idiotic people because it's bringing in people from so many different backgrounds, so many different beliefs, so many different professions, and they're even going, what's going on? So you're going to see a lot more curiosity, but you're also going to see a lot more hate when it comes to this topic. People are going to get mad and lose their mind. And so far with my family, I haven't had that. I've had more support, even though they don't agree, but I do have some family members that do agree or that are at least questioning it, and some that are going to come out to my conferences and, and check it out and see why is it that these guys believe what they do? And at least they'll be equipped to find out, you know, what we don't believe. And we don't believe that we're on a flying a disc through space. And we don't believe that we could just fall off the edge and stuff like this. So that helps just to kind of bring it to a level that's not so idiotic. It's idiotic, maybe, but it's not as crazy. Even us, you know, we would laugh at ideas like flatter society, the fact that, you know, we're a flying pancake in space. That seems preposterous and laughable. We don't believe we move at all. The earth doesn't move. So was uh, 2017 the first year of the yes. Flat Earth Convention or conference? Yes, the very first, and that was the U.S. one. And then, like I said, this year we got the one in Canada in the summer, and then we have the one for U.S. is in Denver in the fall. But, yeah, the one last year was the first ever. I mean, it was the first ever in any country in the history of the world. So nice. it was like a very historic thing, uh, and it was really gratifying, and it was just an incredible time. I think the biggest thing was for the community uh, coming together for a long time. We were watching people like Mark Sargent or Marty Leeds or different people online. And to me, bringing everyone in that people could see that there were real faces, you know, to that mm. name. And right. it just really bonded the community. And really, because we'd got so much ridicule and laughter, it was a time of just feeling safe, you know. Uh, right. 
be together, and then meeting other people that were coming there that were curious on the topic and just asking questions. I mean, we were ramming it down their throat. We were just saying, this is great. Don't listen to us. Go do your own research. That's the right. one motto of Flat Earth is don't listen to us. Go do your own research. And I think it's such a beautiful motto. It's just basically saying, look. It's pretty rare in the science community. <laughs> don't listen to us. Go do it for yourself. It's incredibly rare. It's rare in any type of belief system to be like, no, believe what we believe. We, we believe the truth. No. Right. Don't listen to what I believe. Don't listen to what I, you know, I say. Don't li don't believe what my documentaries, you know, put uh, forward. Go and critically research it and try to examine the evidence that's put forward and see if what is presented is true. But don't believe stuff that you read and don't believe stuff that you see. I think it's a great thing. And I mean, why are we getting ridiculed so much when all we're saying is go and do your own research? And I, I hold to that as something that's really important. And I'll keep saying that, uh, you know, to my dying day for sure. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, I love it. Uh, and I would love to, as we said, have you on again for as much as my listeners might hate it uh, <laughs> to do another episode. I would love to pick your brain even more on that. And let's uh, let's do some bonus here. But uh, Robbie, uh, let people know where they can find your documentaries and sure. more information about you. Anything else that even things that you want to plug or, you know, point sure. people in the right direction for resources on this topic? Sure. Okay. Well, my uh, website, CelebrateTruth.org, CelebrateTruth.org. You can find uh, Scientism Exposed 1 and 2. Also on YouTube, if you just type in Celebrate Truth, those two words, or my name, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find my materials. But I have over 10 documentaries that I've done, um, not just on this topic. I have over 300 videos. Uh, my channel has been out on YouTube for almost three years. I have a big collection of works there. Uh, so, yeah, I'd uh, invite anyone to go check it out there or go to my website, CelebrateTruth.org. As far as if you're interested in the conferences, uh, you can go to fe2018.com, just fe2018.com. You can learn about the conference in the USA or the conference in Canada or any upcoming conferences in any other uh, countries that I have planned. Uh, all the information will be posted there. So obviously corresponding years, if you're you know watching this or listening to this and it's uh, 2019, go to fe2019.com and you should be able to find the information. But yeah, so my information is uh, Celebrate Truth. You can look for it on YouTube. You can Google Celebrate Truth or go to CelebrateTruth.org and uh, check out Scientism Exposed. It'll be an incredible journey, um, and I think that it will open your eyes to a lot of deceptions in scientism. And if anything, it will teach you the difference between what is good, true science and what's scientism. And I think that I break that down very well, and it will lead you on your journey. And from there, you know, I wish you the best on discovering truth because the truth will set you free. Awesome. Love it. Uh, well, Robbie, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I will undoubtedly, uh, you know, get yelled at for all of it. But <laughs> I really enjoyed it personally. And if you ever want to come back on, uh, you're more than welcome to be here. Um, but yeah, thanks, man. Thank you so much for having me on. I look uh, look forward to uh, to the future and uh, just keep uh, you know discovering it. No matter what kind of attacks or feedback you get, like I said, the one thing you will get is views, and you're going to get a lot of people. And even if there's a hundred people that uh, laugh at you, there's going to be that one person that's going to say, "I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look into that." I see it all the time. It's one person at a time. And honestly, their people are uh, literally having their world changed, and I think it's an amazing thing. So. Uh, blessings to you. Thank you so much, and uh, real pleasure and honor. Dun, 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 dun. Hey guys, thanks for listening. And if you made it this far, I am proud of you. I really am. You're you're a decent human being. Uh, hopefully, you didn't get too triggered and throw your phone at the wall before you could get to this point. If you did, then you can't hear any words I'm saying anyway. Uh, as, as we said in the interview, Robbie and I recorded a bonus hour where he answered. Uh, all the questions you guys submitted in the forum. If you'd like to hear that, if you'd like to hear a whole bunch of fun bonus content every single week, or if you'd like to just support the show and help me continue growing this thing bigger and better, you can do all of that by joining the Downers Club at tsidpod.com forward slash support. Uh, the club is what keeps all of this going. Uh, every dollar that you guys give, I put straight back into the show and expanding it, making everything bigger and better. Uh, for your viewing and listening pleasure. So I really appreciate you guys. I really do. Th this week we had a club member, Scott McElroy, bump up his contribution up to uh, $15 per month. Thank you, Scott. I like your style. And again, to the rest of you, if you like what we're doing here, you're going to love the club. So give it a shot. Go sign up at tsidpod.com forward slash support. 
And if you're wondering how you can join the completely free forum and get in on the conversation, uh, submit questions for guests like we did for Robbie Davidson, uh, you can give input on the show or just talk about a bunch of weird stuff with other weird people. Uh, just go to Facebook and type in the system is down forum, ask to join. And if you look like a real human, I'll let you in. No problem. And last but not least, please help bump up our numbers by subscribing and reviewing the show on iTunes. Uh, share the show with a couple friends this week. Uh, do all the social media following, liking, and all that jazz. Links to all that stuff, uh, if you're looking for it, can be found in the show description. Uh, do all that, and I'll love you forever. And of course, if you'd be so kind as to allow me back into your ears again, I'll be here first thing next Monday with some more uncomfortable conversations for you. Until then, question everything and stay uncomfortable. Thanks. This has been a Goulash Media production. Goulashmedia.net. This concludes our broadcast day. Click.